Welcome to the Technician's Tips. Today we're going to be showing you how, with no math, to balance your calcium and alkalinity simply by recording your logs in a detailed way. So the first thing that you need to know is that calcium and alkalinity are being used by animals in a saltwater aquarium to build their skeletons. Corals, coralline algae, snails, crabs, even sponges and fish take a calcium ion and a carbonate ion out of the water and form calcium carbonate skeletons. Carbonate is another word for alkalinity. So the first thing that you need to do is test your calcium and alkalinity with a high quality test kit. This is the Red Sea Pro Test Kit. You need to make sure it's the Pro Test Kit. These are extremely reliable, very accurate, very precise, and regardless of who's testing, you get the same results every time. And they're very easy to use for beginner hobbyists. A lot of other tests can be somewhat difficult. So great test kit, highly recommend it. You also are gonna be dosing with a two-part calcium and alkalinity supplement. Now our recommendation for this is the Reef Pro product. Uh, we've had great success with it. Not only are you dosing calcium and alkalinity, but also in a controlled way, 33 trace elements. So it's a great product. If it's not available in your local area and you would like to use it, check out his website. I'm gonna put his shop in the description below. So something that you need to know about two-part dosing is that every product has a different concentration. So you do need to check the instructions to figure out what your starting dose is. Now with the ReefPro product on the calcium, it says here that one milliliter of ReefPro Complete Part A will raise the calcium by 12 parts per million per one US gallon. So our starting dose is generally one mil per gallon. And then we'll go from there as I'm about to show you with our logging to get everything balanced. So now we're on to the meat of the video. I'm gonna show you a really easy way to balance your calcium and alkalinity with no math. All that you have to do is record the values over time in some sort of log. These are the binders that we use on our services. And this is a great method, not only for beginners, but also for advanced aquarists, because it's just, it's great to be able to visualize what's going on in the aquarium in a really easy way. So if you look here, it's important that you record the date because you want to figure out what the consumption is over time. And then we also record any relevant water chemistry parameters. So now let's just hypothetically go over an aquarium. Let's say that we started service on a 50 gallon tank and the first visit that we were there, the alkalinity was at seven. So I would write seven and then I would record sometime on the date. Let's say that we're going there once a week. So the alkalinity was lower than we wanted it to be. We prefer to keep our alk somewhere between eight and nine. So we would dose 50 milliliters since it's a 50 gallon aquarium. And then the next time that we go there, the alkalinity tests seven and a half. So I'll record another point and it's still lower than we would want it to be. But again, we want these changes to go slow. So we're gonna dose 50 milliliters again. And then the next visit we show up and it's eight, which is where we want it but we would still like it to be somewhere in between that range, so we do 50 milliliters again. And now let's say it's 8.25. It didn't go up to eight and a half. And that's something that you will notice is that a lot of times as you get closer to the correct consumption rate, it starts to taper off. It won't always be linear. But you can see using this method, and then when you connect the dots, that it's just a really easy way to visualize uh, what's going on in the tank. So let's do a little more complicated example with the calcium. We went there and the calcium was at 360, super low. Uh, so we did the same thing, we dosed one milliliter per gallon. And the first time we record at 360, the next time it's still too low. The next week, let's say we're right at 410. And then the next time that we show up, we're at 4.30, let's say. And then the next time that we show up, we're at 4.50. And with calcium, we generally try to keep it somewhere between 4.20 and 4.60. So at this rate that we're increasing, 
it's going to quickly get too high, higher than we would want the calcium to be. So now we have to adjust the dosage down. And generally what I like to do is to cut the dosage in half. So instead of 50, we're dosing 25 milliliters now. And then let's imagine that it went down to 440. And instead of reacting too quickly, we're going to dose 25 milliliters again over the next week to make sure that there isn't anything funny going on in the tank. And we see the same linear decline. It's at 430 now. So we know we're going in the wrong direction. We know it needs to be slightly higher than that. So we'll do it again. And so this time we'll be dosing 35 milliliters. And we go and test and we're at 440. And then the next time, 445, back to 440. Eventually over time, you will get the calcium and alkalinity stable if you're keeping track. One thing to point out is that if you're good about writing down the dates, you don't have to do it on the same day every week. It doesn't have to be in a periodic fashion. Uh, you can just go and I guess this time you would have to do some math and figure out what your consumption was over that period of time um, and then get everything balanced. But if you have any questions, let us know in the comments. I know that balancing calcium and alkalinity is a process that a lot of new hobbyists struggle with in the beginning. So please let us know if you have any other questions and thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for the next Tanknitions tips. It's gonna be all about pH.